All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Workforce Wednesday webinars with me, your host for today, Anissa Franklin with the Urban League of Lexington, where I serve as the Chief Administrative Officer. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome all of you for our very first Workforce Wednesday, and our special guests today are Truist who happens to be the sponsor for all of the Workforce Wednesday webinars. And so I say welcome to them. And uh, joining me right now is Scott Love with Truist as well as Kaylin Charlton. So I want to welcome each of you and thank you all for joining us today. Um, Workforce Wednesdays we established as a method of being able to help individuals find and get back into the job market, whether it's building on your existing skills or it happens to be learning new ones like our fiber optics training or even learning new skills in like Microsoft Word and Excel or just interacting with a variety of employers who are trying to uh, find the people to fulfill some positions that they have open. And so right before I kick it off to Scott and allow him to start our journey for today, I do want to ask you all a question. And seeing that the majority of you are on Facebook Live, I am going to ask, have you ever used Microsoft Word or Excel before? Go ahead and type in the comments, yes, a little, yes, a lot, or no, I haven't used it at all. So we'll give you a few seconds for that. And I have one person who says, yes, they use it a lot. All right, thank you all for uh, participating in that poll. So, Kaylin, we have someone who's used it a lot. We have someone who's used it a little. And then, of course, we have some who said that they haven't used it at all. So uh, <laughs> you can span the gamut today as you're talking uh, to us about Microsoft Word and Excel and how those skill sets can help us find employment opportunities that are of interest to us. But before I kick it off to Kaylin, I do want to go ahead and start with Scott. So, Scott. Greet our thank people so today much. and thank you for coming on and go ahead. Thank you so much, Ms. Franklin. I appreciate the opportunity and good afternoon to all of our participants. We're so happy to have you on with us. Um, Kaylin and myself, we represent Truist Bank, who is a, a recent combination of BB&T Bank that you all are probably familiar with and SunTrust Bank. And so our new bank now is called Truist Bank. Uh, we have the distinct pleasure of being now the sixth largest bank in the country, but we're certainly happy to join with the Urban League through a workforce initiative that we actually started on last year. So Ms. Franklin and her team have been uh, just instrumental in helping us to really help meet the needs of the community. So again, welcome. I serve as a community development officer for the bank, and I cover the state of Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. And so today, you know, our, our topic matching skills and opportunities, we're really talking about how we utilize Microsoft products, Microsoft Word and Excel. And I will just tell you on my, on my journey, I use those, those tools on a daily basis. I think um, someone mentioned that they use it an awful lot. And um, in just about every industry that you can think of, you will utilize these two software products. So this is gonna be great knowledge to share today. Let me just tell you a little bit about how I got my training. So um, perhaps um, very similar to your stories, I received training in these applications starting way back in high school and college. But I want you to know that um, I sharpened my saw. Stephen Covey says we should always sharpen our saw, keep our skills uh, tight. And so I actually took classes at the Louisville Urban League on Microsoft and, and um, Excel. I don't think I've shared that with Ms. Franklin. So the Urban League was very instrumental in my uh, development of utilizing these, these uh, platforms on a daily basis, and then also through our free public library. Just about every job that you're gonna pursue, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in banking, or, or any industry that you can really think of, trucking, uh, perhaps you're gonna utilize to some extent these platforms. So the topics that we'll talk about today, the training that we'll talk about today, it'll be instrumental in your job search, either to find that new job or because of this, you've been able to upskill uh, a new job. And so we really thank you for your, your time and patience. You know, for those of you who are in Kentucky, I did look on our website 
And so for our Kentucky region, we right now have 34 open positions. All of those positions require uh, skills in Microsoft Word and Excel. So if you happen to be seeking a job, please go out to careers.truest.com uh, and look over those 34 positions that we have available, some in the Lexington area. So I want to thank again, Ms. Franklin, for that. Um, let you know that you know through my daily work that I'm utilizing Excel spreadsheets to call client data, um, to create reports for internal management, to re, uh, re, um, create excuse me external reports for shareholders and stakeholders throughout the community, and certainly using Microsoft Word, I'm generating reports for internal management, community presentations, and so just about every facet of my work touches upon daily uh, those two applications. So I wanna thank you for your time and your interest in honing your skills to learning more about these two software packages. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Franklin. Thank you for attending, thank you. And we encourage you to come for the other um, Workforce Wednesday uh, presentations. They're all wonderful, it's a great lineup. Truist is a proud sponsor of this and we welcome you to attend the others. With that, Ms. Franklin. Thank you, Scott, I appreciate that. I remember learning Microsoft Word kind of on the job training, was sitting as an administrative assistant and had no idea what Word was, how to get on the internet, none of it. So on the job training is real, but I feel like I've grown a lot since then. And uh, anyone who doesn't have those skill sets yet, don't be intimidated by it. It is a grow as you go uh, kind of uh, software. And so now I wanna turn it over to Kaylin, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about how he uses the software and give us some examples. Great. Thank you all very much. And um, good to be with you all today. I will um, share my screen. And, um, you know, first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Kalen Charlton. I've been with the bank, uh, came on the BBT side. I've been with them for eight years. And when I came to the bank, I started out as a credit analyst. And so I had to use a lot of, um, a lot of Excel and going through that, uh, you know, it, it's just a, what Scott was saying, a way to analyze data, but even that you've got to be able to communicate it too in some form or facet and you can't just hand someone numbers. So I think Microsoft um, does a great job with, you know, both Word and Excel and to be able to analyze data and then how can we ar articulate that? So, you know, I've done that since starting at the bank and, you know, currently in my role, as a CRA strategic program manager, what that means is, is I have to still use the same stuff to report, as Scott was saying, a lot of reporting, a lot of documenting, a lot of telling what we're doing in the community, what, what programs are doing, you know, or just saying, hey, you know, I've got to talk to my manager, like, how can I get this message to them? Um, there's, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways they can use it, but I would say, you know, to what Scott has, you know, said, you're going to have a very, very large chance that this is going to be part of your work if you're, you know, within an office setting, whether it's healthcare, whether it's um, finance, whether it's insurance, whether, um, you know, in, in retail, you're, you're going to have to have this medium, I would say, to be able to express your thought. So, with that being said, you know, why, why, let's start with, you know, why Microsoft Office? Heard a stat. I think about a week ago that 92% of companies operate off of Microsoft, um, uh, you know, software. So maybe it's not going to be, you know, a 100% chance, but I would say at least a 90% chance that you would use, you know, Microsoft Office. And what Scott was saying, you know, the positions that he saw available in Kentucky through the bank, a lot of those, the majority would say, hey, you've got to be knowledgeable and um, Microsoft Office. So, you know, don't be intimidated by it. You've you've probably used this um, at school, at library, at the library, and if, even if you hadn't, um, there's a great opportunity. I remember, you know, when I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and didn't have a computer at home, I remember going to the public library and, and, and using, um, you know, Internet Explorer and, and also using Excel and, and Microsoft Word to apply for jobs. So, I've been there and it's, um, you know, it, yeah, you, you can learn a lot and you can grow from it step by step. So there's always 
different levels. And I think that's what we got today. We've got some that have never used it, some that use it a lot, but I'll tell you, you know, how I use it in my job. And primarily it's to communicate and document. My thought, the thoughts that I have around doing my job, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna essentially pull open and open up Microsoft Word and I'm gonna start putting, it's not necessarily pen to paper, but start typing out what I'm thinking, what I want to do, and, and and writing, essentially writing my thoughts down. But how I use it is, uh, you know, reviewing proposals, uh, you know, again, looking at how to create reports and, and communicate how the community, what's going on with the community, uh, describing how the bank performs in the community. So doing that, reviewing resumes. So I think, you know, as you're looking to apply for jobs and you've developed your resume or looking to develop your resume, Microsoft Word is going to be that medium in which you, you know, open up and start putting, hey, this is what I've done at this job and this is when it was. There's a lot of different ways to format that, that Microsoft will help you do. And so, you know, it's a great, great place to, you know, create your resume, keep your resume up, save your resume um, for years to come. I think I've, you know, I've never not had a resume that's never been a Microsoft Word, so I've carried that through since I would say 15 years. So if that if that tells you anything, like you know how long we've used it, and you know being able to year over year uh, build build a resume in, in the software that you need to do it, this would pro I mean I would recommend doing it the, through Microsoft Word. Uh, the other way is the other thing that I do is you know when it comes to talking about reporting and you know, You've got to have procedures, and again, this is the documentation side of, of what you would use Microsoft Word for. But um, besides those, besides typing, right? I mean, I think we can understand generally, like, hey, we can open up Word, we can start typing away. Um, you know, I don't need to scribble down on a piece of paper anymore and, you know, send it in, in the mail. But even what, you know, it allows you to do is the more, give you a better way of articulating what you would say, either through different charts and tables, um, and also creating standard formats and memos and forms and reports. So you can set up a, a lot of different options to, to standardize stuff, and I can show you some examples of those. Um, so just for example, like let's say that, I think we can understand the basics. If we wanted to type in, I mean, I love workforce, Wednesdays. I mean, that's the first thing, right? But even at that, there's different ways that we would want to say, hey, how can this, you know, can I change the, the case? Can I do different formatting? I'm very excited, so I want to uppercase all of these, so I just can highlight it, and now everybody can tell that I'm super serious about loving Workforce Wednesdays. Um, but the same thing, you know, I think one thing to keep in mind as you're going through using these different softwares is how can this make your life, your, your job easier? How can you be more efficient in doing things? Um, how can you be more effective in communicating? And so even, you know, from a format standpoint, um, I have a sentence here called I love workforce Wednesdays. I've typed it out. That's, that's it. But what if I just want to say, okay, I just want to capitalize each word and make it into sentence format. And I can do that rather than going in and, you know, having to do a lot of backspace and change, right? So I think a lot of the software as you get into, you know, learning and growing through it, you can make it work for you more efficiently. You can make, make it work for you in a way that saves you time. That way you can go on vacation or that way you can take a break or that way, <laughs> that way, you know, whatever you want to, if you want to just look at, you know, Facebook and, <laughs> and, and concentrate on that, focus on how it can make your life better, your job better through, through anything that you do. Um, so, you know, that's one thing there's, you know, the typing aspect, the different uh, formats that you can do, whether it's, you know, if I highlight stuff, for example, and want to indent, I can highlight it and then hit tab on the keyboard and then I can, you know, keep moving it wherever I want to. So, and if I want it to go back, 
I can go up here and select the indention to come back. So uh, you may see that a lot as you're working through your resume, like how do I format, how do I get in a certain way, adding bullets, you know, if you come up here to what's called the ribbon, this is a ribbon up here at the top, you have different options of what you want to do. Uh, really, you know, I would start with typing something out if you want to use this, you know, as, as you're learning and growing, um, and then highlight something and then see what you want to do from like, okay, I'm working on my resume and I want to, someone will say, can you put that in bullet item form or, you know, can you, you know, give me just the bullet points. This is what that is. You can go in here and you can, you know, basically say, I want to do different bullets. All right. So there's, there's that aspect. I think that could be handy as you're, you know, learning to create your resumes. Um, the other thing too, is you can make it into a list, right? So we talked about, Hey, I use this for, for procedures. Like, well, I want to keep making more procedures. Um, I love, you know, all the things I love. I love taking vacation. Um, I love, uh, I love eating good food. Good food. But let's say like, if we got serious, right? Let's, let's say that, you know, not just about what, what, what I like and what I like to do, but let's say that how, how, do, how would you tell someone, you know, step by step, you know, if you're creating a list in Word, uh, how to, how to like use, use a certain program. So let's say that we were looking at Microsoft Word, uh, first, first step, right? Open. Word by double clicking, right? And then after, after opening, uh, start typing and then format by highlighting, highlighting words. put words in bold. I mean, this is, I mean, I know this is at its simplest form, this is what you do, but I didn't have to go in here and like, you know, click on, I, I didn't have to keep, you know, putting everything in one, two, three, and four. As you notice, it'll do that for you as you type in more things. So it saves, again, it helps saves you time as you're making lists and putting your thoughts together in a job. Um, you know, let's say that you're going into engineering, right? And you have to say, okay, what are the steps that I have to take in order to do this process? How do I tell that person to do this? You know, this would be one way of doing that. So I think the one thing I would say too, is that, you know, besides typing, there's charts and tables that you can use, uh, you know, as you get more advanced, like what does that look? Again, you would come up here to the ribbon. You know, we've got over here, we've got home, we've got insert, we've got page layout, but you know, we'll go here to insert and we can look at different charts. If we wanted to say, hey, let's do a basic, basic table, right? We can come in here and do different types and select what we want, whether it's, you know, two by two, three by two, and we could do, you know, we could make a, you know, again, make a list, uh, to do list, uh, person doing the work and then time to complete it. So let's say that I've got to, let's see, uh, report on, uh, let's do report on Scott program. Kaylin and Scott. And all I'm doing here is to go between each different cell I'm hitting the tab button. So I can hit the tab button on the keyboard and it makes me go to different places within the cells. So time to complete it. Yep. 
I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say, you know, for anyone who's watching, um, don't be overwhelmed by what you may uh, see Kaylin doing. We actually have a training starting next week where we'll walk through each of these steps one by one, and you'll have individual attention with our instructor, James McFarland, to help you uh, learn these different skill sets and get you right on your way. Yeah, it can be a lot, y'all. It, it, it can be, you know, I think the first step is, you know, understanding how to open it, where to go and, and what these buttons do. And, you, you know, you see all these selections and you think, oh, my goodness, it's like getting a new car. What does this button do? And you're like, I shouldn't have pressed that button. But don't worry, I'll show you my favorite button um, to prevent that from ever happening. But, you know, let's go time to complete. Let's do uh, May the 31st. All right. So, you know, again, basic, basic way of laying th laying your thoughts out, documenting your thoughts, um, telling, you know, what you're trying to do and what, what you want to accomplish or who's going to do it. So I think, you know, th there's, there's great ways of doing that. And the other thing too is, you know, once, once you have this, and again, like I said, even with a resume, you can have it on file, you can save it, it's there when you need it, and you can come back to it, and you don't have to replicate work. So again, it makes it, it makes a lot more efficient, or if you need to use it for another project or another aspect of your work, you can carry that forward with you. So I think that would go back to, you know, creating standard forms and memos and, and reports. You know, you can come in here and you can do a lot of different formatting that <clears throat> puts it puts it in um, in a replicable way of, of of doing it month over month, week over week, or day over day, so you don't have to do it over and over and over again. So, you know, I would say very, very technical stuff. You know, what are my favorite tools and words? I really love the undo, undo button, y'all. I really do. It's my favorite one because I make a lot of mistakes. Um, I, I'm always a backspace delete type of person. Uh, just like take that back. Don't don't worry about it. But the undo button. So let's say you know you're like, oh man, I messed up. Gosh, like I didn't want to put that there. Like where where do I go? So let's say that. Let's not do that again. And uh, like I just deleted everything. Oh my gosh, I can't get my work back. Not necessarily. I just go up here to my undo button and I can get it back. You know, it's like, oh, I just didn't, like someone just deleted a whole page of stuff that I spent three hours of doing. And like, I didn't mean to do that. I love the undo button. And, you know, just for those that, you know, are, are more inclined to saying, hey, I use Word a lot more, you can hit on your keyboard. It's the control button. It's literally the CTRL. And see, there you go, CTRL. Typo, gotta fix that. So if I hit CTRL and then Z on my keyboard, that'll be my undo button. You just taught me something. I had no idea that that was. <laughs> <laughs> Control Z. Yep. Again, making your life more efficient, right? So that's gonna be. And so we know we don't, you don't make that many mistakes. So, you know, let's say that that added up to a whole day, you know, you get a day of vacation back or you get, you get more time, you get more time to focus on other things of your work that makes you happier or more effective and, you know, better at your job. And the, again, the better that you get at your job and the more that you grow, uh, there's more opportunity to, you know, progress in your career. So that's the undo button. There's a lot of other shortcuts that you can use, uh, but that's my favorite one because, again, you make mistakes and it's like you start to panic and then you start to say, okay, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to just control Z a lot. The other one I really like, and I think it's the best practice to always think as you're using Word or a lot of different applications that don't have automatic save, you want to go up here and you want to save your files. It's this little floppy disk. This is a floppy disk, y'all. They used it back in the 90s. Um, it was before CDs 
it was before uh, USB sticks, it was before the cloud. This is what data would go on, but this is the save um, button. So if you go up here, do it, do it often. You know, I would say like the best practice as you're working in Word or a lot of other Microsoft um, products, go up here and, and, you know, it's been 15 minutes, I'm just gonna hit save. Because that way, like if I accidentally close out of this, if all of a sudden the power goes out, then I don't want to have not saved for, you know, let's say an hour or two and not being able to get my work back. Again, make your, allow the software to make your life easier and more efficient when it comes to your job. Another uh, favorite thing I do like is we, we talk about a lot about formatting. I mean, you'll, you know, as, as you get into the software more, and even if you're at an intermediate level, you start to really say, well, how can I make this look in a better format? Is this clear enough? Is it, is it showing the way, is it showing the words that I want it to be conveyed as? There's an easy way if you say, hey, I want to just replicate a format, right? So, and, and you can use what's called the format painter. That format painter is up here in the left-hand corner. And you can see it's right here. And I like using this because it saves me a lot of time if I need to like change something pretty quickly. So the way that I would say that you can use this is the example would be, let's look at this bullet right here. I want this format for everything. Great. Well, what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna highlight what I want to format. I'm gonna come up here to my format painter in the left-hand corner, and I'm gonna double click. I double click on that, and you can see my icon has changed. It's got a little brush beside it. With that, I'm just gonna come here, and I'm gonna go to what I wanna essentially paint across. I'm gonna take, press down on my, on my mouse, on the left, do a left click and then highlight this. And when I do that, boom, it changes to the exact format that I had up here and you can still see that I have that little paintbrush still beside my little icon. I can go here and I wanna change this too. Great. So I can come in here and do that. And I, you don't have to do that for each one but let's say that I wanted to do it for the whole document, right? Rather than going through and going line by line by line by line by line, highlight everything. And it changes it to the exact format that you wanted to select it as. So again, it's one way to make it a lot more efficient. So we'll go back to our handy dandy, uh, you know, undo button, which is great, right? And we go back to where we were, so we don't have to do anything. So that being said, you know, don't worry about messing up in Word. You can always, if, if you do like a lot of good saves, if you do, um, you know, you keep up with your work and you, you can always undo and you can, you can get back to where you were. Uh, that way you don't have to replicate a lot of work. Uh, for those that are maybe more, you know, at an intermediate level uh, to, to using Word, besides typing, besides, um, you know, using it for your resume or, you know, using it to do, do proofreading uh, for an email. You, there's, there's the smart art idea um, or smart art type of um, option here. So again, if we went up here to the ribbon, what we can do is really put in a way to describe our thoughts more. So go up here to the ribbon, insert smart art underneath illustration. And let's, let's again, let's say, um, let's say I wanna show a cycle, right? There's different options here of showing how, you know, again, your thoughts would be laid out and what you're trying to explain. Let's say that we're trying to look at a cycle what we can do is, here, let me go back. Control Z. <laughs> I want this one. Okay, cool. 
So let's say, ready? You can come in here and click on, click within the, the circles and start typing. Um, ready for job. Okay, what do I want to do next? I want to uh, prepare resume. And I just keep going around. Send resume to employers and so on and so forth until you can come back to full, full circle. So again, it could be an array of different things. You probably have seen these a lot, like, you know, people in, in companies saying, this is how, you know, the cycle of, let's say the circle of life works, you know, how does that work? Or, you know, this is the home buying process. This is step one, this is step two, or, you know, this is how to save money. You know, this is, this is the path. You know, this is a way that you can create that in Microsoft Word to show that process. But even at that, you know, say that you didn't, again, we go back to formatting. I don't like the way that this looks. You can come in here and do different, they, there's different options to show just from a formatting standpoint without you having to recreate everything. It keeps your data where, it keeps your words where they are in the process and you just have to select a different way to view it. It just depends, again, your audience that you want to convey this to. And then I'll throw in a couple more things and then we'll hop into Microsoft Word. So I'm going to do Control Z. Well, let's just do this. I'm just going to click on that, hit backspace, and then we get back to what we're talking about. So again, for those that may be at more intermediate, uh, you can do whenever you're, let's say that you're working on a document with two other people and you have to get in there and you have to like say, all right, you know, Anissa is going to do this, Scott's going to do this, and Kalen's going to do this. Well, how do I know what you change? How do I know what you do? What happened? You know, did Scott change this? Did Kalen change this? Did Anissa change this? We don't know. So there's a feature that you can do um, where you can turn on what are called track changes. Essentially, you can, once you turn this on, anything that's done um, can be kept up. So like, let's say that I don't want the word documents included in that. I'm gonna take that out and it'll show that that'll no longer be, that, that someone took that out. And what I can do from, you know, let's say that we go through here and we're just going to say this is out and I don't like this word. Great. And then let's say I add these, right? Well, what I can do is, you know, Scott come in here and he's deleted documents. He's deleted, you know, segmented formatting and added reviewing. And so I'm going to come in and say, okay, do I want to accept all the changes that he's done or do I want to go one by one? So what we're going to do is we say, okay, accept, accept, accept. Do I like that word? Do I like reviewing rather than formatting? Okay, sure. And so that, that way you can go in and you can keep up with who did what? Do you want to change that? Do we need to talk about it? There's a lot of different options. So it also can get a little messy um, when you do this, but it, you know, if you're working in a group project, either in school, uh, you know, at church, um, in the community, uh, whatever, you know, you may be in the job, it, it can help you at least keep, keep in check as a group who's doing what and what, what was different and who's editing. So I'm going to stop there. Page break is another one I like just because it helps with formatting. It's a little boring, but um, <laughs> I like it. it. It helps keep some stuff in, in play. So just to recap, you know, Microsoft Word, probably 90% of businesses use it. Um, so good chance that you're going to come across this. In, in a way that how you're going to communicate and document what you do in the workforce, uh, either, you know, writing out 
uh, procedures, writing out lists, writing out, you know, communications, letters, what, what, what have you. But there's other features that you can use, uh, whether it's smart art, whether it's, you know, tables and charts that you can insert and really it's just how you can want to communicate and document and then ultimately think, how can I make this, you know, how is this going to make my job more efficient and more effective or my communication more effective? So there's a lot of things that you can learn and I use it all the time. I, I think it's, it's, it's a good product and a good uh, medium. So do I want to save? Yeah, let's save. That's Microsoft Word. Um, the other one's going to get into Microsoft Excel. Now I will tell you. And if you begin with yep. uh, Excel, I do want to let you know uh, that the time is now 12.35. So we'll mm -hmm. have about 15 minutes to go through Excel. And then I've got a couple of questions I'd like to ask you on the uh, back end. I will say that uh, Word and Excel, I don't think you can ever stop learning these different pro uh, programs. Uh, for example, as I said today, you know, he taught me something today, and I've been using it for more than 20 years. Uh, as the software changes, you just continue to grow with those changes, and you start to realize the different things that you can do, and then it just becomes, you know, second nature for you to do it automatically. So uh, thanks again, Kaylin, for Microsoft Word. Like I said, again, I've, I've learned something today with your shortcuts because I love those. And uh, I'm looking forward to what you have to share about Excel. Awesome. And, you know, that that's the thing. I will say as you get into the difference between Excel and uh, Microsoft Word, Excel's got a lot of great, um, I would say it's a good, place to start if you're thinking like how can I do how you'll you'll hear it a lot like it's the buzzword I think for here on out data 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 like you, you'll hear like well you know you know you'll read like the newspaper like the data is showing like the you know carbon is up or you know like this is what's going on with th these many clients within Facebook you know or these many users when you hear stuff like that, it's going somewhere, you know, it's going like when data is going somewhere, it's landed in a little cell that gets stored somewhere in the cloud. But that Excel will give you a good insight in how that can be done from, a, you know, from a basic to a more intermediate, like data analysis level. But, you know, again, what can it be used for why Excel uh, compiling scrubbing, analyzing, and reporting on data. And what's data? I know that's, that may seem broad, but just think like, you know, numbers, one, you know, numbers, words can be data, symbols can be data. I think if you looked on your keyboard and typed it in, that's going to be what could be considered data. How, how does this, uh, you know, how does this relate to an outcome, right? What, what does a one mean? What does love mean? what does a plus, a minus, or equals mean? So, you know, just basic stuff, what we'll look at today is more so like the, the, the numbers and the words. But they, you know, Excel can help with a lot of mathematical problems and really like, you know, your order of operations, your, you know, add, subtract, divide, and multiply. I think really don't be intimidated by Excel if you if 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 you if you add subtract and multiply you can make it work for you and it's you can make it work a little bit better than a calculator and see see more of you know how your mind works and again the document how to document and make lists and then help solve those mathematical problems but it also can be it, it's, a, it's a logical tool and you know you'll hear within the workforce like how you know how do you solve problems and, you know, how can you analyze this and, you know, getting into coding. I mean, coding really is a lot of logical based um, programming. So Excel can do that. Uh, and then really, again, it's a tool to help your, to make your work more efficient. So the one example, I, I got two examples that we can look at. 
as we're coming up on time. But, you know, just from a basic standpoint, Excel is made up of rows, which go from left to right, and columns, which go up and down. What you then can do is you can take what data you want and put it into cells, right? So that's where the name came from. Excel is, is from, you know, play on the cell. So what, what you can do, and this is an example I have, is let's say that you wanted to make uh, a monthly budget, right, for your family. This is a great personal way to like, again, if you go to the library, go, go to the computer lab, like start out trying to learn how to use Excel, use it how it would work for you personally. This is something that I try to do uh, with my family is, in keeping track of a monthly budget, what's coming in and what's going out. So you can come in here and let's say that I have a savings goal of $50, right? But lo and behold, all my money is just spent. I don't have the ability, I don't feel like I have $50 to save a month. There's just no way. I mean, I know I've got to pay my rent and I've kept that at say, let's say 30% because I want to keep my rent affordable. Um, I've got to have my food, you know, I can't cut back on my food. I mean, it's 20% of what I'm spending, but you know, I'm coming in here and how I made this, you know, you would come in here and say rent, and then I would type in my rent, right? 950, right? Food, 650. And all I've done here is I've gone line by line and put that, you know, expense, that personal expense in. And then I would come down here and enter in equals, SUM, sum. So just add everything together. And then I tell it where to look, right? I want to add from gifts up to rent. So all I'm doing is I'm clicking on this little box and dragging it up to what I want it to add. So this is the calculator. This is this is me not, you know, having to enter in line by line by line on calculator and then forget what I added in. So I can go in here and change there. So really, you know, I, I could say, well, I need to, I want to say $50. So where can I come in and say 50? So let's say that I don't need to spend any more money towards Amazon. I'm going to come in here oh, and put it in a zero. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I just, I just cut Amazon because I've got to have, I've got to have rent. I've got to have somewhere to live. I got to pay, I got to pay my rent. I've got to have somewhere to eat. And, you know, I've got to have my $125 a, a week to, to spend on food. Uh, I've, I've got to travel, you know. So I think the way where I'm going to cut is Amazon. I'm going to, and what I've done here is, again, this is a way to analyze and calculate uh, data. Let's say that my monthly take home pay, which you can calculate, let's say that I would put equals, which says, hey, solve this, solve this problem, solve this, solve this formula. I would put equals, let's say I make $15 an hour, I work 160 hours a month, and all this little star is, y'all, is saying times, let's go and multiply this. So 15 times 160, I'm going to take six probably about 67% home because, you know, taxes. And then, you know, that's for two people in the house. So let's say that I can calculate that. I can add up my expenses. And then at the end of the day, if I can say my grand total of expenses is less than what I'm taking home, how much do I have left? I got 50 bucks. So, yeah, and this is a basic tool. I think, you know, for, for personal use, I use this, you know, to, to help my fiance with keeping track of her business expenses um, for the company that she has. But I, I do this personally uh, just to keep track of, of my own personal income um, and, and, and expenses. So good tool uh, as you go into, again, 
the computer lab and uh, work through this. Um, I think that's a good way to start out because you're going to be personally able to say, I've got this um, expense per month and this is how much it costs. There's different, there, the way that you would do, you know, have take a percentage is really, again, we can get in the details later. I don't want to take up too much time because I, I know we're, we're coming up on time. And this, am, am I okay for like five more minutes? You're okay for five more minutes. All right. So when we were talking about, you know, going up and, and what Excel can do, a lot of it's formula based. Uh, formula really in Excel is going to always start out with up here in this box, this big white box. We can make it big. We don't want that big of a formula. They can get kind of big, but we just want to keep it simple. And they'll all, they'll start out with equals. Whenever you start out, you know, you click on a cell and you say in this cell, I want this to calculate. It's going to start out with an equal sign to, to begin your formula. My, my, uh, what I love, I've got the, the basic formulas that I'll use, um, and they're here in these columns. The first one's the sum formula. So you can see, I would go in here and click in equals. I would type in sum, open parentheses, and then I just want to tell it where to look. So it look at, I go in here and select these, um, these cells and they would add it together. So one, two, three, four equals 10. Concatenate, you know, we talked about how Excel can look at data and data could be words. Um, let's say that I want to put uh, these three words in one sentence. What I can do is make a formula to do that. It's called a concatenate, just means put stuff together. And so I would go up here to the, the formula box equals type in concatenate and then open parentheses and then select what I would want to combine together. There's other things too, like the left and the right, where you can say I only want, let's say that this was someone's social security number. It's not, um, but let's say that you wanted only social security, you wanted to see what the first three letters are or first three numbers of of a data series, then you can go here and do left. Cause you know, I said at the beginning, you, you can do this to scrub data. This may be more for the intermediate people, but um, like you can use this to go through to make sure that everything's good in, in a certain format um, and getting the series right and do some checks. So you can come in here. If you want just the right, you can again, up in the formula box equals right the, the the data point that you're looking at, select that, click on it, and then I only want to go right for digits. So it'll give me the digits from right here. The, the other one is count. It's basically equals count, open parentheses, and then select the one the the cells that you're looking at, and that can return like how many cells do I have? What's in here? It's a good basic function to say, hey, um, you know, tell me, tell me what's in the data. You know, like how many, how many pieces of data are we looking at? How many rows? What's going on? So those are some basic functions. I know we've got some on on the call that are more at intermediate level. Uh, you know, you can get into. I think these are my two ones that I would always use a lot. Some if. Um, and really, it, some if it builds in logic to the sum formula, and it says pretty much if I come in here equals some if. Again, I select where I want my data to look, and then I'm going to tell my data, I'm going to tell my formula here. I've got my range and my criteria. I'm going to say only add those that are three. So if I wanted to, I, I can do that here, add those that are only three. What's my range? Same, same, same sum range. So then I can see here, it's only adding 
the threes together. And then the other one, um, which I would say for those that are more at an intermediate level, learn the V lookup as much as you possibly can. It's something that I learned, uh, you know, 10 years ago. It gives you a good understanding of how data analysis works. And if you just, you, I would say YouTube, uh, you know, go to Microsoft Office, you know, Google, how to do a VLOOKUP on Google. Um, it, it's a great way and it's going to save you a lot of time as you get into larger sets of data. So VLOOKUP means just vertical lookup. And what it's going to do is say, let's take, I just want to get the price of Apple, right? I've got my list over here and I want to know how much is, you know, an Apple. What I can do is, again, I can do equals B lookup. What I'm going to tell is up here is I want to look up this value. My value is Apple. Then what I want to do is select where I'm going to look with that formula. And over here, I've got my food and my prices. So I select that as my table. And y'all don't get, don't get intimidated by these dollar signs. That doesn't mean, it just means we can get, you know, if you got questions about this, we, we can talk about that later, but don't get intimidated by it. It just essentially tells, don't move the table. But what the, what it's gonna do is say, this too is important, right? It's gonna say, look vertically, look down and vertical, two columns, and then return the value for what you're looking up. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, here, I'm going to look down through this list and I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to return that value. So that's, it's going to return 75 cents. And I know you may be thinking, well, the list is right there, Kalen. Look, just, just type in 75 cents. Do that. Isn't that a lot easier? As you start to see how you can use Excel, you can have a whole list of data on one of these tabs and then you want to put it in a different format and you, and you can do a lot of different things. Um, it just will take some time to explain. So I know if I'm on time, I will stop there, pause there. Those are, I love Excel. It's, it's a great thing. And Anissa, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Kaylin. I definitely appreciate all that you have shared today. I've learned a lot, especially in Excel. I thought I knew Excel. Um, and that just tells me that I'm at the beginner level. Uh, so I look forward to learning more from you and from James as he continues uh, to provide these kinds of trainings uh, to us. Again, everybody, our uh, Microsoft Word class will begin next week on Tuesday. If you're interested in that uh, session, please go to our website. It's ullex.org slash jobs, and you can find out how to register for that training there. Uh, Kaylin, I don't know, can you, there we go, stop sharing your screen. And so I did want to ask you a couple of questions before we go. And the first is, uh, Scott mentioned earlier, but if someone is still with us, how can they go about finding uh, employment opportunities with Truist? Yeah, um, you can go to careers.truist.com, I believe, and you, you would go in, and within the search bar, I think there's options that like, say, I want to look in Kentucky, look, you know, type in Kentucky and it'll list the jobs that are there. I think Scott said there's 34 listed right now, um, but that's going to be the best way. You know, I would say you could always use Indeed too. Um, you know, there's different ways to get to the same place. Uh, go into Indeed and you could do, you know, search in Truist for a keyword and then put in your location. That, that you're wanting to look at. So if it's Lexington, put in Lexington. If it's Louisville, Louisville, uh, Owensboro, uh, Bowling Green, put put in your location. I think that would be the best way to go about it. Okay. And can you tell us what do you love the most about your job? I really like looking at data and and then seeing the qualitative side of it. So even even you know like we were talking about y'all when facebook says like hey we've got a billion users 
but they can drill down into one person's life and being able to see like how they, you know, go about their life. I think I enjoy that about my job is, is knowing about, you know, what people in the community like the Urban League are doing, how that's making lives better, how they're serving people. But it's not just the number, it's, it's actual, you know, lives that are getting improved or someone going into a job. Like, I mean, that, that, that may show up as a tick mark for, for a report, but, you know, that, that, let's say that stays in Excel. I'm going to, you know, pick up Microsoft Word and, you know, start typing away about the person's, you know, ability to get a job, land a job, and how that made their life better. So I, I really enjoy that aspect of my, um, my job, my career, and, and also the partnerships that we have in play with people like Urban Link. And with that, I want to say thank you so much, you and Scott, for joining us today. Uh, before everyone leaves, I do want to uh, just share a little bit of information with you all. Uh, first, today we did Matching Your Skills uh, with Truist. And then next, not next week, but two weeks from today, we'll also be doing uh, what we're calling Becoming a Strong Candidate. And that's going to be with our instructor, James McFarland. And we'll, again, be live on Facebook as well as through the Zoom format. And then coming up in June, we'll do home ownership. I know a lot of people are purchasing homes uh, these days. It seems like a home is not on the market for longer than three days before someone has already purchased it. So if you've ever considered purchasing a home, uh, that would be the workshop session that you would uh, want to attend. Even if you've, you know, you're just getting started, I think this is the perfect time to learn what you need in place in order to purchase a home. And Scott Love will be back with us to talk about um, that. And then uh, coming up later in June, we'll have another session uh, with Metronet, who is looking for people to work in fiber optics. Now, fiber optics is not something that, you know, people just learn every day. However, it is one of the trainings that the Urban League is providing coming up starting next month. Again, James McFarland is going to be leading that. And to um, James is just an all-around fantastic trainer. Uh, he's been doing the fiber optics training now for over three years, and 45 people have been placed in employment uh, with uh, one of the cabling companies that are local to the Lexington area. So if you're interested in uh, one of these positions, which typically starts out at about $17 an hour, uh, you definitely want to sign up for our free training for it and then attend the hiring event in June. Uh, also coming up in July, which I don't have on the screen here, is um, we'll have what your social media says about you with uh, Kier Arnold, who's with 11 Keys Media, and that will be followed up two weeks later uh, with the Kentucky American Water Group, which is also doing a hiring event. So uh, a lot of people haven't ever thought about a career in water, but what I've learned about water, people um, go into that career field and they stay. So uh, if it's something that you're looking for, a lifetime of great um, a great atmosphere and learning new things and how you can contribute to our community, then I would definitely say to attend that. All of this will be shared on our Facebook page as we move forward. And don't forget to visit our website at ullex.org to learn more about uh, the different jobs initiatives we have coming up. Thanks to Truist.